Zambetu Nyakit, Zambam Mibo Shanga. I'm really happy to be here with each of you today. Uh, I really want to commend uh, Vanessa uh, for her uh, heart, heartfelt uh, presentation. The uh, National Wildlife Federation, uh, being the largest member based conservation organization in the United States, in working with Native American tribes is, is a tremendous, it's a tremendous thing to, to know that, uh, that we can work together. Uh, I really commend the uh, Tribal Lands Partnerships Program uh, for, for continuing to work with, with tribes on our conservation and restoration efforts on tribal lands. Had it not been for Vanessa, Eco Cheyenne and the Tribal Lands Partnerships Program, there likely would be an open strip coal mine on the Northern Cheyenne Reservation in Montana right now. Because we can work together like that, we, we've been able to accomplish uh, a tremendous amount. As the bison uh, representative uh, for the Eastern Shoshone Tribe, we've been working on this effort for, for 40 plus years. And uh, it's, been, it's been very uh, difficult to, to try to get these things done. Boijan Biden means buffalo return in the Shoshone language. And they are returning to, to the Wind River Reservation in Wyoming. A trip to East Africa changed my, changed my life. Um, Visiting this area with, with my father in Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda to witness the wildebeest migration was one of the most incredible things I ever saw. But what, more, what was more incredible to me was that this was a small percentage of the buffalo population that was here, actually less than 5%. The largest ungulate migration in the world today is 1.5 million animals, the wildebeest migration. This is less than 5% of what the buffalo was here on this continent less than 200 years ago. So it really, the, the bison and the demise of the buffalo uh, was, was the annihilation of the largest migratory herd in world history. And it was because they wanted to wipe out the native people. So returning to returning home to the reservation, uh, this has been an effort of, of not only mine, but my father's for, for a long time. And it's much more than a reintroduction because there's so many issues with genetics, cattle gene intergression, disease brought by European cattle in the first place, management as wildlife. Biodiversity is incredibly important with buffalo. As a keystone species, they benefit birds, anurans, lepidopterans, reptiles, arthropods. And not to mention how important they are in the diet of our native people. To be able to restore a connection to Buffalo is a way to help heal the past. It's a way to help heal us as native people. We used to use them for everything. When I talk to kids, I joke around about that they were our Walmart. <laughs> everything that we use uh, came from, from, from the Buffalo, as well as other wildlife too, but they were, they were more than uh, just food. But food, very important. Uh, much more nutritious than many other meats. And so being able to put this animal back in our diet is also a way to help improve our health disparities, our overwhelming rates of diabetes, heart disease, from the change in diet that, uh, that we underwent. This is likely what the uh, United States would look like if we were able to choose our own states but, uh, as we know, uh, subsequent treaties and uh, working with uh, or without the federal government resulted in the reservations that we see today. What happened to the buffalo similarly happened to us. Buffalo were isolated on former pockets of their territory, as are we. Today, there's many tribes that are working to restore buffalo back to our, our tribal lands. 
This is the tribal uh, Yellowstone Bison Initiative. The tribes that are involved in, in buffalo restoration and cultural revitalization and economic, or economic development as well as ecological restoration. Some places like Montana have several tribes, seven tribes to be, seven reservations and 13 tribes in Montana. Uh, all the tribes in Montana have re, uh, buffalo or bison populations. But being in a, in a state like Wyoming, uh, we're kind of left by ourselves. And in a cowboy state, uh, it's oftentimes even worse. And because we share a reservation with our traditional enemies, we operate as two different governments, it's oftentimes very difficult to get things done, but, but we are. And it's because of partnerships like with the National Wildlife Federation that we've been able to get as far as we have. Oftentimes, the reservation is left out of maps because of the jurisdictional limitations. But Yellowstone uh, is, the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem is uh, part of the reservation and actually the Yellowstone was originally part of our reservation in 1863 when it was 44 million acres. We lost 42 million acres within five years and in 1868 it was reduced to the reservation size that it is now. So a lot of the national parks and wilderness areas that were part of our reservation are, are now uh, protected under federal jurisdiction. Nonetheless, the tribes at Wind River have a history of conservation success that is often not thought about or, or known. Like in 1938, when the tribes de designated the very first wilderness roadless area, 26 years before the Wilderness Act of 1964, set aside over 180,000 acres with 200 lakes and several hundred miles of rivers and streams. Or in 1984, when the tribes passed a comprehensive game code to set seasons and bag limits on our wildlife species because most of them were being uh, over harvested due to non unregulated hunting. In the 1990s and 2000, we passed comprehensive wolf and grizzly bear management plans that recognizes these animals uh, for their historical and cultural importance as kin to us as native people. This is a far different perspective than the dominant society or even the, the, the government in Wyoming who basically has a shoot on site policy. We like these guys, we want to have them there and we protect them. We currently manage six of the seven ungulate species on the reservation that were there prior to Lewis and Clark as well as the, as the predator species. So we have a history of conservation success except for this one. This is the only guy we're missing, but he's coming back. We've uh, worked pretty hard to, to get where we are. Keep an eye on the, on the wind rivers there as we zoom in to see where uh, we're establishing a population. Shoshone tribe has allocated a 300 acre parcel of land for the Boijan Biden program. It's not large, it's not what we want to see for the big picture, but in working with the Shoshone Business Council, they said, it doesn't matter if you have to bring one here first, at least that we'll have one buffalo for the Shoshone tribe. Well, we'll, we'll get a few more than one, but uh, fence construction started on this piece of property this last weekend. So this is just a view looking to the, uh, to the west. Um, we're very excited about it. It's, uh, we're really looking forward to, to getting some on the ground. We're really excited to work with the school kids, uh, getting them a, a hands-on opportunity to, to touch parts of the buffalo, to learn about how we say these parts and how they were used in our language. It's because of the National Wildlife Federation's Buffalo Box that we're able to go into the schools and, and show them uh, how different parts of the buffalo were used from the stomach to the bladder to the bones to the hide. They get to, they get to touch it and feel it. 
And eventually, maybe down the road, their kids uh, will be able to hunt buffalo in the same way that we utilize our other wildlife species for sustainability and sustenance and improving the, the health uh, conditions of our, of our people. Working with the school kids uh, on Earth Day, we uh, presented them with a, a, f a frame of a buffalo, and it was up to them to create their idea of what, uh, what this is. So this is an example of a, a buffalo paper, half paper mache um, made by the Arapaho School on the reservation. Uh, you can make out there how different parts of the buffalo were used, such as the hide or the rawhide, brains, tongue, skulls, beard, hair, stomach. Those kids, they all know this. They know how it was used. Another one, they were just, uh, you know, they, they got to spend the, the several days in decorating these, and they're extremely proud to know that buffalo were going to be returning to, to the reservation and to know that uh, they have a ownership in that. This is an overview of the reservation, and mainly what I want to point out is that that 300-acre parcel is a small dot uh, there, which is barely, it's not quite visible, but we have, we have more uh, land available on the reservation than what's even in Yellowstone. When I show that map about how the lands were reduced, those buffalo were isolated in Yellowstone because they were killed everywhere else. 1902, there were less than 100 left in Yellowstone. Right now, there's 4,000 or so buffalo in Yellowstone on 100,000 acres. 100,000 acres. Ultimately, we would like to have 1,000 buffalo on the 700,000 acres that we have in the northern boundary of our reservation, not to mention the 500,000 acres that are in the Wind Rivers. With the continued support of National Wildlife Federation, the Tribal Lands Partnerships Program, people like you will be able to continue to help not only our tribes, but other tribes, Northern Cheyenne, Crow, whoever needs the help for conservation and restoration, we need to have people like you, we need to have people like National Wildlife Federation to continue to support what we do on our tribal lands as sovereign nations, we have that ability to make decisions on our homelands, but we have to have partnerships with large NGOs, uh, with wealthy donors, with people who can provide opportunities for us to help fix or change the atrocities of the past. What Vanessa talked about, what I talk about, we are trying to fix some of the wrongs that have been done to us by restoring a piece of our integrity, by maintaining a, that land for generations into the future, for being able to go out on a landscape and see a buffalo, not in a national park, not off of the reservation, but our own, for our own people, for our own tribes. So with that, I want to thank you for your time and uh, listening to me. Uh, I really appreciate your work that you do and the support that you provide. And uh, keep supporting the Tribal Lands Partnerships Program. It's, it's very, very important. Thank you.